I'll quickly rush down to the next section. This is going to be the soft skill. There's a third soft skill for the wisdom workshop and the second for today. And the title is documenting and publishing experiences. Documenting and publishing experiences. The presentation is going to be for 15 minutes. And to take us on this presentation is the VCSP Knowledge Portal Lead, Shetna. Um, Shetna. Hi, David. Hi, Shetna. Okay. It's good to have you. You have the floor to yourself. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Oh. Yeah. All right. So we've had a very interesting two days. And I know that many of you have learned a lot through this um, event. As we started off the, um, the program and the workshop, we learned some experiences that the past VCS have shared with us. And if you listened carefully, a lot of these experiences enabled us to get a better picture of what VCSP stands for. But more importantly, it helps us see the different tools that are available and how we can implement this. And we've had some really expert panels from Justice and Kate a while ago. Everyone had a common um, agenda in mind. When we are doing a work that is making an impact in our communities, we need to be able to share it. So I'll turn off my video for now because I want the quality of my presentation um, to be good. I'm, I'm from Fiji and we currently have a cyclone going on. And I know we have a lot of our participants who are from the Pacific as well. So um, a, bula bula, a, a big bula vinaka to you all. And um, who am I? Um, if you had seen the handbook and participants, um, picture of me, you would have seen me on a podium um, speaking. I've not always been a speaker. So I grew up with a very shy background. And then I was introduced to a very good English teacher who um, had allegedly placed me into a debate forum. And that's where my career started. I realized that I had talent of speaking and I was never a good um, I was, I was very shy at first, but what you have in front of me now is um, my students at the University of the South Pacific. They're from different regional campuses and um, we were out on a field trip to a housing authority project where students were required to document a lot of their experiences. So I feel like today's session is, is very important. But before I start um, today's session, Kamshin, can you please place up the mentee poll? I want to hear from you. Why do you think it is important to document your approach to solving land-based community problems? Wow, we've got really, really good, really nice um, answers. Yep, we're all good on track. Thanks, Kamshin. So the objectives of today's lesson is three. First, we will start in the benefits of documenting and publishing experiences and how it relates to sustainable solutions for land-based community problems. Second, we'll look at some ethical considerations required when engaging the public. And third, did you say, how do you start? We'll look at that too. So the first part is documentation. Um, there are many mediums of documentation. They can be narratives, they can be stories. If you are someone who's very passionate about writing stories and narrative forms, we welcome documentation in that way as well. They can be source orientated using templates or a set of questions based on a particular question. They can be focus group discussions, identifying an organizing group or people. It can be records of accurate accounts. Or five, it can be personal experience. The method that you use for documenting can vary as well. They can be through cameras, um, including pictures or videos. They can be maps using ArcGIS or QGIS. They can be um, blogs or reflective journals. VCSP stands for the values of respect, curiosity, volunteerism, and sustainability. If you have the handbook in front of you, I've already documented what today's session is about. Another good example of why documenting and publishing experiences is important. We're living what we practice. Five, um, once you've documented and published, you can always share your work and someone can see it over a cup of coffee. This can include videos or podcasts, maps, 
um, reports, blogs, posters, flyers, story forms. So the, there's three stages to it. One is you gather the data. Second is you assemble the data and you try and find evidence of what is something that can be published online and that can be shared to the people by considering the ethical consideration. And third is the outcome. How do you want the product to be? Um, whether you want it through videos, a podcast, maps. And this is a creative artwork of what the uh, young surveyors are involved in. This is your work. So you can be comfortable in making a report if you're comfortable with that. You can be someone who loves to share videos and that's fine as well. So the benefits of documenting and publishing experience is it provides analysis, review and sharing. Before I started my first journal article, I spent about two years um, sitting on one piece of paper thinking, how do I start this? And once I got it done and I sent it for the reviewers to review my work and I got a lot of comments, it made me realize on how important it is for me to get my work checked. It is important for me to, to, to start writing for me to be able to have an output because it built my personal knowledge and it built the knowledge of the people that I was going to share this information to. So the benefits of documenting and publishing include transparency. If you're involved in a field project and you go in the field, when you provide evidence of what you've done, you are including transparency in your work. But keeping in mind that the community that you're working with, the organizations that you're working with, they might have certain procedures or standards or protocols that you have to follow. There might be certain information that are too sensitive to be shared. So you want to avoid sharing any sensitive information and you want to get approval for it. But for the transparency and confidentiality bit, you can always share it with the colleagues that you're working with, or you can share it with the partners that you've been um, liaising with. It ensures accountability. It provides communication. It builds relationship. It informs engagement, teamwork, and integrity. So when you start, um, sorry, when you start um, documenting and publishing, the first thing it does, it removes or um, it reduces information as a matry. Information asymmetry is where one particular group may hold a lot of information and the other community members may lack it, therefore making poor decisions to their land use or land management issues or even being afraid to implement certain tools or approaches in their communities because they have lack of information about it. When you start documenting and publishing as young surveyors, it, it brings about this cross-generational information where you're able to share your work and people are able to get hope from what you've done. It provides validation of tools and approaches used. So after you've, um, so there's two forms of documentation and publishing you can do. You can write an impact story, which is subjective in nature, or you can do an evidence-based report. So once you've applied a tool or approach in the field and you have gathered data on how um, good this tool was, how valid it was, whether there was any limitations, you can then improve on these limitations that has been identified with your partners. So it is, um, a, 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 it is a benefit to both the documenter and the person reading it. It saves cost and time of training. Um, future generations who will be using that tool or who will be going to the community or who will be using a similar approach that you've used in the community. It provides evidence of your humanitarian work. And finally, it builds community and provides assistance. One of the goals for VCSP is sustainability. Documenting and publishing experiences are transferable. It provides cross-generational information. It is available to future generations. It is evidence-based or subjective and can be reflective. Now imagine a 2050 young surveyor reading your work. Wouldn't that be amazing? So how do you get this started? There are few ethical consideration that needs to be made. Now let me just share the handbook and calendar that has been provided to you. So if you go onto this handbook, um, calendar, you will find a documenting and publishing experiences code of conduct. These are code of conducts that the volunteer community surveyor also places close attention to. So when you have the time, you can definitely go ahead and read this. But the first thing is to embrace the VCSP values as well as the partner's core values. Respect confidentiality, keep sensitive information sensitive informed consent of communities or participants that the studies will be based on accountability to team, 
be ready to transfer knowledge, clarify, explain, and demonstrate, carry out the specified task according to the project requirement, comply with partners' policies and procedures, provide evidence of the work that you have done. You must ensure that research documented or published has been carried out according to relevant internationally accepted guidelines, fraudulent publications, including fabrication, falsification, and plagiarized work is avoided at all cost. And you must acknowledge all partners, declare any conflict of interest, and in the event the work has two or more authors, then authorship roles are clearly identified. So in summary of the ethical consideration, you must ask yourself, is my publication, is my documentation respecting the participants of the organization's privacy? If no, then are you sure? Then you must go back and read and adhere to the code of conduct. If yes, did I get a formal consent? If no, then again, you must go back and read and adhere to the code of conduct. If yes, then how do you implement this? So the code of conduct and ethical approvals is important because it respects human rights, privacy, and confidentiality, which are core drivers to protect human lives against potential coercion, exploitation, and to minimize physical or psychological harm. It also ensures that communities are respected and consulted, building trust and relationships. So how do you start? A very short presentation, but there's seven goals for you to start um, publishing and documenting. First, you must understand that it builds integrity and networking. So document and publish to share your experiences to build relationship. Two, plagiarism and dupl duplication must be avoided. Reference all work cited. Three, practice the do it now rule. Say no to pro procrastination. Build your curiosity in the field as you start documenting. The perfect time is now. When you go onto the field or when you're working on a project, start with the reflective writing, start with thinking, how do I make this better? And work on it there and then. You might be amazed that while you're doing the project that it builds your curiosity as you go. It actually helps you think better at the same time. Human rights, privacy, and confidentiality, respect the communities you visit, ensure ethical considerations and procedures are followed and approval consented when documenting. Five, choose your medium. Are you a writer? Are you a mapper? Are you an artist? Get adventurous. Movies, podcasts, posters, or any written work are great ways to share your story. Peer review. I believe this is the best thing we can do. Ask your friends, mentors, or supervisors to comment on your work. It does you wonders. It actually improves your capacity to write and it improves your learning skills as well. And, and the last, conflict of interest. If there's any conflict of interest with the communities that you have just consulted, please declare this. And if possible, if it is a big conflict of interest, then avoid being part of that project. Remember, read at least one book per month. So we have all have it in us on the start. Actually, this generation has it more than others, selfies. We're quite good at documenting it through pictures and we've seen it during our COVID pandemic as well, where we've kept our families informed. We've been sharing it on social media and selfies are a great way of sharing memories and stories too. And maps, of course, tell a thousand words. So questions for you. Uh, we have, you have just about uh, four minutes more. Thank you, David. So there's some questions for you. How do you think networking is leveraged through this approach? How are you achieving sustainability through this approach? What does documentation do to your character and lives of those around us as humanitarian surveyors? Remember, it's not always about the work that we have done because um, it is improving something. It's more about the character that you're developing through the process. And why is this an important approach to sustainable solutions? You can do it. Finally, I would like to quote the famous Mahatma Gandhi's reading. And this has also been provided in the concluding remarks of your handbook. Sustainable solutions for land-based community problems would not be sustainable if it is not recorded, stored, managed, and shared. Mahatma Gandhi once said, by quoting Edward Linton, the pen is mightier than the sword and led India into independence. As humanitarian surveyors in the field of land management, development, tenure security, and mapping, this cannot be any truer. Our global partners are tirelessly providing tools and avenues to eradicate violence, gender inequalities, food insecurities, environmental crisis due to poor land tenure systems. 
your impact stories can move the impossible mountain of information as a matrix. Finally, we want to hear from you and your work in the field. Your reflective journals, videos, blogs, pictures, podcasts, or maps can bring hope to many. This will further be um, developed and placed into a knowledge portal, which we are hoping to go live in 2024. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, um, Shetna. That was a very robust presentation.